Hello, everyone, and welcome to another great panel discussion at the Bus Expo China Summit. I'm very happy to introduce you to an old friend of bus travel. Melvin Bircher is the CEO of Travel Dudes, COO of I Ambassador, and as well, one of the top travel bloggers. The topic today is travel bloggers and content creators and their experience in and outside of China. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be an interesting talk. And with these words, I give the word to Melvin. Melvin, please, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much for the introduction. And yeah, we are here to talk about the dream job to be an influencer or to be a travel blogger. I would really like to focus more on the travel blogging because it provides far more value. We'll get into that later as well a bit. And there are two different ways of travel blogging. There's the ones who do it as a hobby. There's the ones who like to, to do it as a profession. And there's the really the professional ones who already travel the world for many, many years and yeah, make a living out of that. And two of those are right now in Mexico and they can't join us because they're in the middle of a hurricane. Maybe they still like drop by, but that's like how travel blogging works sometimes. We are all now in a in this crisis mode in a digital life and um, doing these kind of conferences online. So we have to see what happens and what happens not. And um, yeah, in this talk, we would like to see a bit behind the scenes of the professional travel bloggers because it's not so easy to make a living out of that. And what does a travel blogger really uh, needs to do to make a living out of that while traveling the world? Um, so we have also like, uh, we've got Leo as uh, one of the Chinese travel bloggers and um, also Nicholas. Let me introduce you to this team. I will share the screen with you. There it is. So we have Leo Long. Like said, he is, Leo is an editor at the Luxury Tourism Magazine in Macau, Macau, and he runs his own travel blog, Ongoing Travel. He started travel writing in 2006 and has reached his 100th country at the age of 29. So he's seen pretty much of the world. So far, so far he has published three travel books and one of them became a best-selling book in Greater China. So quite a, a lot of experience there. Then we have Nicolas Montemaggi, who is the director of marketing for I Ambassador. We can speak Italian, German, or English with him. I will stick to English. Um, <laughs> at the moment he speaks, starts speaking German, it's more Bavarian, but um, yeah, I've got my troubles with that one, though I'm German. And um, he's chief marketing officer at I Ambassador, where he's responsible for expanding and strengthening client and blogger relations developing I Ambassador's education services as well as longer term business strategies. Previously, he spent five years at the Emilia Romagna Tourism Board in Italy, where he was responsible for digital PR and international online media relations. So Nicolas has seen both sides of the, of the world of travel blogging, working with the travel blogging, uh, but now also running campaigns with the travel bloggers and also knows their kind of um, perspective a bit more. Who is not on board? That would be Darius and Nick. Um, though they are not here, I would still like to introduce them because they play the, our international part. And I think it's definitely worth checking them out online after we had our call here with you, this video conference. So Nick Wharton is the co-founder of Goats on the Road, a leading travel and lifestyle blog, which aims to teach people how to earn money online on the road and on the go so that they can travel how they want and find financial freedom while exploring the world. He also runs into fly fishing and co-runs your Irish adventure. His partner is Darius. Darius has been living and working abroad for more than 10 years. She's an expert in making money online and on the road. She shares her advice on goats on the road. And Darius aims to teach and inspire others to live a freer, happier lifestyle. And I think that's a lot of what um, a lot of people want to do when they start travel blogging. I'm going back to our conference screen. Now we can see the team again. Yeah, travel blogging, lifestyle. And we've got Leo, you are, where are you right now? I'm in Uruguay at the moment. Yeah, I come back to Uruguay in March because at that time, there are many cases in China. There was no case in Uruguay. So I decided to flew to Uruguay and here was safer. 
And is it like that? Is it still like safe over there? Is it fine? Yeah, yeah, it is quite safe. There's not many cases here. And it was one of the um, 17 countries that European Union opened the door to. Yeah, because um, it controlled the coronavirus very well, the government here. Have you been traveling since then? Yeah, um, th th this year I was uh, traveling in March and um, and also in February um, before okay, I. Okay, but since Europe. March you haven't. Yeah, since yeah since March I returned to Uruguay. I didn't do any travel, so I'm dreaming to go traveling again soon. <laughs> so let's say this is your home, your current base. So like, how long are you? Uh, have you stayed home? Is this there? I mean, when is the last time? You haven't been traveling for such a long time. I mean, I've seen you a couple of times in person, but that was always <laughs> around the world, somewhere yeah, else, uh, conferences and campaigns. Yeah, yeah, before the coronavirus uh, period, I was traveling almost every month, keep a very busy life. Now I um, yeah, have to start kind of slow down and take the time to improve my Spanish, enjoy my normal life. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, that's like, um, but it's, yeah, it's, I like to say that it's right now really like a surreal um, time we have. And um, a lot of times it feels so normal, but then on the other side, it's like so chaotic out there. And yeah. um, it's a bit sad to see because I think it's actually it would be possible to, um, to, to be traveling and also to promote, um, to travel and to do destination promotion campaigns, which we do as travel right. tools, but also as I am Bazador. Ah, yeah. When we talk about that, I actually forgot to um, introduce myself. So I'm Melvin. I'm the um, founder and CEO of Travel Dudes. And Travel Dudes is an industry leader within the field of travel influencer marketing. In partnership with clients, we create cost effective, inspirational, and engaging travel content for digital and social platforms. So all the platforms which you can see in the Western world, like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Pinterest, and whatever, YouTube, whatever is out there. The last three years, talking about YouTube, we have focused on producing videos for our own distribution of a travel guide show, which I'm pretty proud of. Once someone introduced me as a pioneer of travel blogging, which sounds more wise than old, as I run travel dudes already 14 years full time. So I also have those uh, perspective and the experience of travel blogging, um, but also having a team behind me, which I can send around. How does is it, is it looking for you? Leo, so you run your own blog and um, your audience, now I'm frozen, very nice, but I hope you can still like hear me. Leo. Uh, uh, yeah, your, your voice is frozen a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. I started travel writing since 2006. At that time, not many Chinese people travel independently and even very few who travel and wrote I did both. So to my surprise, I my blog got 5 million total view within five years. So a publish, publisher asked me whether I want to publish a book. I said, why now? And once it get published, it become one of best selling book in China. So I got a lot of invitation to do uh, to attend TV show and do speech and radio program. Um, now I work for um, travel magazine called Luxury Tourism in Macau. China. I still run my own blog. We focus on luxury tourism and millennial travel. Yeah. Uh, later, I will give you more example how we cooperate with the DMO destination and to promote uh, to run the campaign to promote the destination. Okay, I missed a bit of that um, because I was logged out, but I'm logged in now again. Um, <laughs> okay. yeah, but I know what you do anyway. But and but. Uh, I think for our audience, that was very interesting that you gave them a little wrap up of what you, what you are doing. Nicola, so what's your role? Like, how do you see travel blogging? Yeah, hi, and uh, thanks uh, again for the invitation. And it's a pleasure to be here and especially uh, to see Leo again also. I, I know it has been quite a while, but uh, luckily, even if we cannot travel, we can see us uh, online now. And uh, also, yeah, like uh, Leo said as well, uh, travel blogging uh, has a bit changed since it started first. Like uh, Leo made the example of uh, back then in China when there were like a few individual 
you know, um, holiday makers or people didn't really travel a lot individually. And uh, let's say that at the beginning, travel blogging was uh, still a niche, right? Not a lot of people yeah. were, were doing that. And nowadays we have maybe like uh, too many travel blogs out there. Who knows? <laughs> that could be <laughs> a thing. But uh, no, no, that's good. That means that... Uh, there is uh, the interest, the growing interest also within the industry to collaborate with this, uh, I wouldn't say like a new kind of media because uh, as you, Melvin, said, you were an innovator back then and it's, uh, you know, it was like around 2010, 2011, so almost 10 years ago. And uh, of course, a lot has changed, but uh, also some things stayed the same. So the way destinations or brands work and collaborate with uh, travel bloggers, content creators, uh, didn't have uh, so much of a big, big change. Maybe the changes in uh, which channels the content is going to be produced or published, but the way of working with them, uh, we see as well at iAmbassador has uh, pretty much remained the same as a couple of years ago. Yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, that's. Um, I like to say that it's always like same, same, but different. And yeah. um, I remember the old days where travel blogging uh, was not like in favor of the journalists. And nowadays, most of the journalists run also their own blog. And it's got so similar in, in many ways. And I think yeah, the, the is very similar. Yeah, the starting point is very easy. As long as you have an Instagram, you start to travel, you start to share your content, and then you get a follower, maybe one day you will be um, in the industry as well as us. Yeah. So like um, you, you mentioned Instagram. So what's your the, the channels which you use, Leo? What's like, um, especially in China, to reach like a Chinese audience? I think that might be of interest for our international listeners. Yeah. And the social media platform in China is different from the rest of the world. I would say before travel, the Chinese uh, traveler get some inspiration from WeChat moment, which is kind of like Facebook, uh, Weib Weibo, kind of like Twitter, Bilibili, similar to YouTube, and also uh, the Chinese version of Tito, etc. And then it goes to the uh, second stage, uh, trip planning. Chinese traveler like to have a look at some website or mobile app like Ma Feng Wo, Chong Yao, to read some travel article by some uh, other Chinese traveler. And during the trip, Chinese traveler like to share their photo or short video via social media, like uh, uh, I have mentioned, uh, WeChat, uh, Weibo, TikTok. Uh, in the end, after the trip, they like to share their experience with longer posts on WeChat, uh, Ma Feng Wo, and uh, etc. I, but uh, I found it interestingly, uh, many Chinese people start to use Instagram and Facebook to share their experience, although it is blocked in China. <laughs> <laughs> that is interesting. Um, shall we go into the tricks um, how people are doing that? No, we don't do that at this moment yet. So yeah. like of all those platforms, like which is your favorite one? Uh, which do you like most? I guess you use a couple of them, but can you like point out one which you think is the, the best one? Yeah. Yeah, I use a lot for uh, Weibo because it was one of the uh, earliest uh, uh, social media platform uh, to share my travel. Uh, I got the most follower on Weibo as well. Um, yeah, it is kind, kind of like Western Twitter and still they have uh, um, the highest uh, user in the industry as well. Yeah. And uh, nowadays, I put uh, in the recent year, I would say I produce more uh, video. So I start to use uh, Bilibili and the Shigua video uh, sharing platform. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah. So you said that the the Chinese are also getting into Instagram and um, Facebook. Um, Nicola, right. I know like you from the experience um, you've had that you got contacted in the past a lot of times by um, DMOs um, and tourism boards in, in China uh, because they wanted to reach, of course, like also the Western audience, like um, via those platforms, which are blocked in China, but is used by so many Western countries. Is that, I guess, one of the main reasons why you get contacted by um, those tourism boards? And how does this look like, uh, this, this conversation with them? 
Uh, well, let's say that uh, uh, the the times we have been like uh, in touch and speaking to Chinese destinations about promoting uh, uh, China to the Western travelers, uh, they were of course interested uh, in uh, also advertising themselves on the platforms that are not blocked, you know, out of uh, of the country. But uh, of course, uh, the um, piece that was a bit missing, like uh, Leo, for example, said. Uh, when travel bloggers work, they create content also while they're on the trip, right? So with the restrictions of the uh, internet, uh, let's say more towards these other channels, uh, the strategy was to let the bloggers have the experience and then just publish later on content about that. Of course, it's a bit more different, but it's also true that uh, we have been more engaged in working with the uh, Chinese travel bloggers and content creators that came to the Western, let's say, world and uh, to promote the destinations, the uh, European destinations, uh, uh, especially into China. So for the Chinese market as, as well, the uh, individual travelers from China were increasing, especially among, uh, uh, let's say, the millennials and the younger travelers. They were more, uh, let's say, they're more used to travel on their own and less to travel within an organized uh, group or through a tour operator, then I'm sure that Leo knows more about this topic uh, uh, than I do, but uh, that's the tendency that we have been seeing. So, of course, it's important to market yourself as a destination or a brand uh, into the Chinese market, uh, but uh, you have uh, multiple channels, which is not only to promote yourself uh, in the individual to the individual travelers, which are still less than the big organized group travels yeah okay so like um, that would mean um you got a let's say a, um like in the past you worked for um, emilia romagna the region in northern italy so um, you were looking for travel bloggers chinese travel bloggers who run a travel blog in those platforms in that language in mandarin and then you uh, but it was in favor of you obviously when they were traveling the world and living in europe um when you choose one of those yeah why, why do you choose a travel blogger not an influencer who is focused only on one platform i mean where's the big value in working with a travel blogger well uh one of the things is as well uh, that the travel bloggers create content not only on social media, which is a bit more immediate, but as well on their websites. And the people, they search for content uh, also online on the search tool platforms, uh, like, uh, for example, in Western, uh, in the Western world, we have more Google. And uh, in China, also, there are different ones where people do their researches. So it was important, of course, to work with people that have uh, as well, uh, let's say, a sort of a website or better to say their own blog and uh, we were working uh, primarily with people uh, back then that they had uh, their own blog on uh, blog.cina.cn uh, uh, so they were having their own uh, blog up there and uh, we saw that it was also uh, really nice to see the created content not only in form of uh, as, short posts on social on social media like immediate posts on social media in the chinese market but as well as a long unique post and what also those posts helped us when working at the tourist board was to understand which were the interests of the chinese travelers and especially how the chinese travel bloggers were let's say promoting the destination and especially describing it to the Chinese audience. So, it so was how does really that look like? Um, like how, um, what you see, how is that different? Well, it's not, this, um, I, I mean, uh, it's not really the difference, but it was more to see, okay, what is this market uh, interested more in about compared to other more, let's say, traditional markets that you work with in Europe? Is and, there something uh, you can like point out? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like uh, we saw that the Chinese traveler has a big interest uh, when it comes to culture, to the local culture, but as well the UNESCO sites. So we saw that a lot of them, of course, uh, were doing most of all a um, weekly or two weeks trip of Europe and they were a bit more packing 
let's say into one week or two week multiple countries so there wasn't only italy for example but there was as well then france switzerland or germany and uh, what we saw we of course tried back then uh, at the tourist board to intercept the interest of those chinese travelers that have been already to italy and so the main sites like it could be rome uh, venice florence you know that they ticked off those boxes and that they were interested then in seeing something else and what was uh, the something else for them important of course all the cultural sites and the unesco sites uh, that uh, italy in this case is rich of but as well the big and famous brands when it comes like to for example cars motorcycles and especially food as well so the big brands that are known as well out of uh, italy out of europe and that are known in china too for them there was really interested to visit that and uh, to see that and to communicate that to their audience and uh, to their readers can you confirm mm. that leo is that like the typical way of chinese travelers yes yeah, some of them are like that as uh, nicolas says uh, because uh, in china the holiday is very limited when they have uh, the holiday uh, we prefer to travel more to see uh, explore more countries so in Europe, there are so many uh, choices to, to visit. Um, uh, and then ma many Chinese traveler uh, with limited time only visit the top attraction. But for the less um, uh, touristy, less famous region, it is uh, not easy. Uh, so uh, some years ago, uh, I did a um, campaign with Finnish tourism board in order to uh, promote to Finland because Finland is in a, dilemma uh, like for Chinese visitor to Europe, very few of us consider Finland as our first or second or even third choice because there's so many uh, other options in Western Europe like France, Germany, Italy, and how we solve the problem. So after discussion with the Finnish tourism board and Finnair, we come up with a campaign idea called Start Over in Finland. So which is like a really because i mean when you travel you hop over the north of europe and that's so it's a perfect um, yeah, course, right? like, fin, fin, fin here has a, a few uh, destination in china and almost all the popular destination in europe so the fin here just allow the passenger flying from china to make a half day to five days stop over in Helsinki because uh, before taking their connecting flight to the final destination in europe we saw extra charge. And then the Finnish tourism board together with many tour operator designed the relevant travel product for Chinese tourists. I was invited to Finland a few times to promote it. I have done a lot of video and posts and um, introduction Finland and the program to give the Chinese tourists information and tell them what, what they can do during their short stay start over in Finland. Have you been in Finland in winter or in summer? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was in Finland five times and uh, three times was in winter. And yeah, it's and, cold, huh? Yeah, it's, it's quite different. And the result of the campaign was really amazing. We see Chinese uh, tourists increase 30% in Finland wow. after the campaign. Yeah, there was a lot of posts on Chinese social media talking about Finland suddenly compared to the, to the other Nordic countries. And even that the Chinese, and then uh, yeah. after that stop, you went to Spain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a joke <laughs> about Finland. Even the Chinese embassy make a complaint about our campaign because the accident increased. They had to publish article to teach Chinese how to drive in Finnish winter. You was talking about the winter. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like, um, I've been also to Helsinki and in Finland, and it's like a very interesting destination. I really like it. I mean, it's like, um, yeah, very different than um, the, the central of Europe. Um, and I think also like this makes um, traveling so interesting, especially also in Europe. You can like have destinations like Finland, and then you hop on a short flight, and then you are in Spain, which is a yeah. completely different experience. That makes it interesting. Yeah, very nice. Do you, do you like... Um, when you travel and so like um, with the Chinese travelers, I mean, in the past, we, we know that um, Chinese travel, travelers were a lot of times in big groups. So you see a change that they travel more independent as well. 
How, how's that looking? How is your, how, what, what kind of content do you promote? Which is your target audience? How um, is the way they travel? Uh, there's a trend that more and more Chinese uh, traveler uh, do the individual travel independently. And in Machu Picchu, I met the old Chinese uh, guides and who have been to uh, all seven wonders of the world. But how he did it with the all in group tour. But a group tour, uh, of course, is part of our industry. There's no complaint. But when we travel independently, we can explore the world more. We can get more into the local culture, get more connection with the local people. It is. I, I feel it is a better way to, to travel. Our target audience is uh, the millennial who are really keen to this uh, new travel style uh, gap out of the big group and explore the world on our own. Yeah, that's what we are promoting now. When you say like promoting, so um, you run destination marketing campaigns. Um, is there, what? how would like your favorite um, campaign look like? What would make it, um, well, the, we know that there's like press trips and then you get like sent from one um, POI from one point of interest to the other to the side, <coughs> you're always in a rush. But I guess as a travel blogging, travel blogger, I mean, you it's peer to peer. It's your personal experience, and you need for an experience. You really need to experience also the the, the country itself. So when you talk, when, when you think of your dream campaign, how would look? Uh, how would this look like? Yeah, I've done a lot of campaign, and even the um, the campaign with our ambassador Nicola, which is here, and we start today, and the tra European Travel Commission to promote the. Uh, Cultural roots of Europe was a very successful and very good one campaign. Um, but you are talking about something uh, special or unique. I would like to share a very unique campaign I've uh, done in the past. It was a non-pay, first of all, uh, to to collect a donation of money and equipment for Nepalese porter. You know the porter in ne Nepal get paid about 15 euro a day, which is very less and their work is very intensive while their equipment is out of day. I work with an NGO, we help Nepalese porter to get about 50,000 euro of the donation. Uh, I was very touched when the Nepalese people wearing I love China t-shirt and say, say to me, thank you, China. Um, wow. well, yeah. There's another case uh, some years ago, together with many influencers and media, we started a campaign in China called Pack One Kilo More. So we encouraged the Chinese traveler to pack one kilo extra of clothes or stationery, etc., for donation when we travel to developing country or even the western part of uh, 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 western part of China, which is less developer. Well, um, I think um, a good campaign or their campaign should uh, encourage the traveler to learn from their trip, to communicate with the local, to support the local economy and respect the local culture. In return, I think um, the traveler will remember, really remember the destination, get an uh, emotion connection with the destination and really willing to promote the destin uh, share the story of the destination it is the best promotion for the destination. So yeah. it's like, yeah, very important to give back and to yeah support the local communities, which is not always so so, so easy. It is always like yeah, easily said, but like doing the right thing when traveling yeah. and also promoting. Uh, it's good that we are doing this. <laughs> yeah. Nicholas, how do you see your favorite kind of campaigns? I mean, you, you got the experience running your own campaigns for many, many years now, like, um, but you also know how press campaigns, press trips are run. It's like, how do you see your, your dream campaign? Well, I mean, uh, the dream campaign, of course, is the one where everything runs so smoothly. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> in terms of... Uh, uh, I mean, of course, uh, uh, what people sometimes don't really think of is that uh, you need to do a big preparation beforehand for the campaign because uh, most of the time people see only what the travel bloggers or the content creators or the influencers publish live. But uh, to do that, in order to be able to do that, you need as a destination or a brand 
work beforehand uh, uh, on uh, preparing the ground about uh, you know the campaign and uh, what they will do and see and uh, organize everything at best time wise so i would say that my dream campaign would be also a campaign to have uh, the most uh, flexibility available in terms of time available for the travel bloggers you know to really get to know the destination and uh, discover what it's really important for them but to do that you also need beforehand as i said to get in touch with the travel bloggers that you will invite why are you inviting this specific person uh, what do you want this specific person to write about why you are inviting this person so get in touch with them and prepare the ground before uh, and having also the travel bloggers, uh, the most professional ones nowadays, they also already tell you in advance what they would like to see and do. So you can find, you know, a sort of a meeting point that uh, goes towards the needs of the travel bloggers, but as well of you as a destination in order what you want to show and what you want to advertise in that specific market. So I would say... Yeah, the dream campaign would be uh, a really a campaign where the actors that are involved in it are really chosen for the needs that you have for that specific campaign. So Which rather means, than yeah, that rather means than, that you need a lot of trust into the blogger you have chosen, right? So how do you find the right bloggers? Exactly. That's uh, what I want to add now was like to you have to find the right bloggers because uh, most of the time what happens, uh, it's like uh, Leo maybe saw that on himself as well, that uh, they say, oh, we need a Chinese travel blogger, right? Then they contact Leo, but then maybe they didn't see that Leo focuses on luxury travel and on luxury experiences. And then maybe they bring him to only like really budget hotels. So they didn't do their research beforehand, right? To say... I want to focus on maybe more budget, let's say, budget-speaking bloggers rather than a, a luxurious one. So I think uh, what you need to do before is, of course, get to know the travel bloggers, get to speak with them. But I also know that it's like uh, difficult to, you know, do all of that when you are an organization that you have to look out at many, many things that happen also within your destination. So the best thing that I suggest that you could do is not only because uh, I represent it or I work for it, but get in touch with, uh, in this case, agencies like ours, I Ambassador, or there are also other agencies out there that uh, do the same, do a great job and uh, introduce you to the best influencers or travel bloggers. Or sometimes even just, for example, you're interested in the Chinese market to work with the Chinese market, get in touch with Leo and ask Leo, hey, Leo, look, we would like to promote this and this and that in the Chinese market. What would your suggestions be? Would you suggest some colleagues of yours, some content creators that could be ideal for that? So, of course, the key is to speak openly and put on the table all the needs that you have. And don't be afraid to ask, you know, or to maybe think that something that you are asking is too crazy. Uh, there is a lot of people out there with a lot of niches and interests. And uh, it's at the end also in the travel sector, uh, let's say a sort of a small world when it comes to content creation. So everybody kind of knows each other and everybody knows the right person to work with. Yes, it's yeah. a, um, I think as well, it's a great community. I mean, it um, got bigger and bigger over the last couple of years, but it's like, well, like in general in travel, it's full of passion. People are really into it uh, because, yeah, they, they love to travel. And I think with the travel blogging, it's um, one step also which adds to that is, I mean, we work in social media and social media only works when you really push you, um, each other, helping each other. And I think that's also the... Uh, like you said, it's like when, when the commun communication is key. You can like get in touch with people. You can ask. You get the right recommendations also for others. And um, I, especially in this kind of crisis where we are in right now, where we need to 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 restart tourism in the next couple of weeks and hopefully not months. No matter. And well, we have to to find a way to live with the current situation. Um, a lot of pieces, people say the new standard, uh, which I don't like at all. It's a current situation. We need to get rid of it and. Um, we have to see, yeah, how we can go back to travel and um, to get the people on the road, which is so important. Okay, well, that is like already half an hour gone, and uh, that was some really good insights. 
Um, would you like to add something at the end, Nick? Maybe you start, Nick, anything to add? Well, I think uh, we pretty much covered, let's say, the surface of the of this world. I would suggest, of course, if you're interested to work uh, with uh, travel bloggers, content creators, either they are from the western part of the world or the eastern part of the world, or in this case, the Chinese bloggers, to get in touch either with us, I ambassador, or with Leo as well. I mean, uh, he's a great resource uh, when it comes to the Chinese uh, um, uh, travel industry. So yeah, that's what I would suggest. Very nice. And um, Leo, anything to add? Yeah, I would like to add, as Ni uh, Nic uh, Nicolas said, um, when you enter a new market, you don't know anything, and you, you should really consult a PR agency or um, uh, a content creator, a travel influencer. Uh, from my work, I see that many um, DMO pay much attention to the big number and big name. What means that many in new influencers in China join the industry, but many of them do not really have an accumulation or a stability. They buy follower, like, and share, and comment. Uh, yes, they can bring a beautiful number, but it do not really help for the destination in long term. So when you enter a new market, really, uh, really get prepared, uh, look for some consultancy service and we work together, yeah, we can make a, a big change. Yes, I think that was a very good last point. I think it, mm -hmm. um, especially nowadays, not um, only look on the numbers, but especially also on the quality. As we yeah. know that like channels like Instagram got also like um, a lot of fake stuff, which is very hard to spot, yeah. also with third party software. Um, it's good to have some experience to, to, to spot that and uh, because it is possible to spot those people. And well, it makes no sense really to, to, to leave your marketing budgets in, um, in, in these kind of platforms and people when you can like, yeah, it's just like wasted money, I would say. So focus right. on the quality. Um, that's a complete different session again. I mean, would be happy to talk about that one as well. Um, but um, yeah, sites like Instagram, uh, it's actually not even so much interested to get away um, away from all those fake numbers uh, because I mean they they compete against other social platforms and they like to show off with big numbers. Um, but that's like I said, different session. I would like to finish here. Um, we showed that it's there's great potential out there, lots of value when you want to promote China to the international world, but also the other way around um, if you're living running a business, a DMO in, in the world, and you want to attract Chinese travel travelers, also that is possible. And well, that's it for us. Thanks a lot for joining and hope to see you maybe in one of the next conferences. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you. Thank you, thanks for having us.